There's a magic in the gig. That bit before the band comes on and that excitement. I love the fun of it, I love the vibe, I love the community. I think it's euphoric, I think it's this huge adrenaline rush. One, two, three, four! I love how they can get all hot and sweaty. For a lot of our fans, it's a big part of their lives. It's something that is part of their emotional health. I think there's lots of scientific research around the release of dopamine in the brain and how it can make you live longer. Our show at the Albert Hall was probably you know, one of the proudest moments of all four of our lives. You know you're in the right job if you've never felt like you've worked a day in your life. It doesn't matter how hard the work is. I don't think it's easy. I think you do this because you love it. It's a very skilled job and there's a lot of training that we have to keep doing. I run a group of music companies and our live team promote over 500 events a year across gigs and festivals. The main things that we work on every year are Kendall Calling Festival and Blue Dot Festival. The Sloan Ridges Club as a band have been around for uh, 10 years now. In the first eight years, we all had full-time jobs. I wasn't one of those people who came out of the womb singing like some people. It was standing on a stage and the reaction I got that made me want to do what I do. A lot of the time, your shows are booked in a year or more in advance. For 2020, for example, I think we started thinking about the headliners in May 2019. And then in March, the bottom have just fell out of the whole thing. Without music events, I'm not working. All our equipment was back before Boris called the full lockdown. Taking the live out of the equation, that is like 80, 90% of our income. I've not had an income since January. You know, everything you've ever worked for is gone. The biggest risk for us this year was the fact that we were going to go and try and tour the United States for the first proper time. We were due to do six weeks, and after day one, we were told that due to COVID, we were going to have to come home. Once we actually got the go-ahead to cancel, it was probably a bit of a relief because then at least we knew where we all stood. And then it was a process of rebooking those gigs that might have been happening in April, that then we either booked for September, but then realising that this wasn't going away. STS's own bankers weren't prepared to support us to a level that we needed. Thankfully, a lot of us received the self-employed benefit. And those that didn't, they were the ones that had the real problems, taking advantage of further government support schemes in the form of taking on debt, which is not what any company wants to do, but it's all we could do. I feel the UK government and businesses need to protect and support the live music industry not just because of its value to the economy and of course to our culture, but also the value of that creative wealth of talent that works within it. This industry is huge. It was the fifth fastest growing last year in this country. You know, you think about it, someone goes to see an arena show, so they're all gonna be going to restaurants, to bars, using trains, using taxis. People see the artists, they see the bricks and mortar venues, but they don't necessarily see the fact that there are swathes of people behind the scenes. The audio guys. Lighting engineers, backline technicians, drivers. Videography, the photography. The caterer. The list goes on. People don't realise that, that this supply chain exists. However you want to look at it, the way that bands and artists make their money is through live and people coming to see them at shows and buying merchandise. We haven't recovered to 1% of turnover yet. Some of the bigger companies have not been so lucky and some of the bigger companies have completely gone already. I've lost a big part of my business, it's a nightmare. I've lost staff members that have worked with me for years who have never put a foot wrong and have to be made redundant, it's horrible. My worry is if there is no investment in this industry now to help it survive, there will be no suppliers. It's, it's not being dramatic. People won't be able to go to see a show. Yes, there's a concern for the big venues, but even more for the small events that are put on, these alternative events for those alternative communities. It's going to be more suicides, definitely, more mental health, more nervous breakdowns. That's the truth of it. 
what we've seen recently with this idea that you know people in the creative industries should retrain and do something in inverted commas more traditional. I think the onus is on the traditional industries to embrace the creative. The whole retraining thing hurt me because it kind of belittled what I did. The only job I've really done is singing, songwriting, things to do with the entertainment industry and the music industry is all I've ever known. This is a life for me, this is my life, this is what makes me me. I think one of the best things about any person that's within creative or within the arts is that they're able to adapt. I'm working as a restaurant host. I have a friend who's now working in the blood bank, who's another tour manager. We have a clothing label that we spend a lot more time on now. We've already worked bar jobs or two other jobs to support the artistic endeavours, so it's not like it's new to anybody. The freelancers like myself at some point, we will have to go and find other jobs so we can get by. Because I already know people that are going into savings and selling houses. I think we're really lucky that we've had we've already had a great career and we'll probably still do alright when it starts up again. But at the moment it's if it starts up again, can we do gigs like we ever could? You know, and it just doesn't make sense when you can sit on a plane next to everybody. Why can't we sit in theatres and gigs? I think for a long time now, if not forever, people's attitudes towards being in a contained space with a lot of people is gonna change. So I think the main thing that we can sort of work towards now is making the environment as safe as possible. A lot of us now are moving into trying to put on social distance shows. It's not sustainable in all scenarios. Like you can't have your venue at 30% capacity. The whole economic framework of how gigs work is gonna to have to change. Somebody's gonna to have to take a hit and it's either gonna be the punter, the venue or the artist. From the response to socially distanced gigs to live stream gigs, people want to go to gigs. So as soon as they are able to, we'll be working again and people will be coming to these shows. We just need to survive that far. We all know that we're in a very, very tricky position right now. The arts have to be protected because art is culture. And I certainly don't want to live in a world after this where culture's not something that exists anymore. If we lose those people and we lose those businesses, it's not just a simple starting again. Historically, there's been industries like the, the bankers have been bailed out and farmers have had the European subsidy. It is a viable industry. The music industry is a massively important industry for this country. So what kind of a government's going to let an industry die that is one of the best in the world? It's not a handout, it's an investment. Promoters having underwritten government-backed insurance is a big step to getting events going here. People do need to write to their MPs. I think we have to keep putting pressure on the government to recognise that there's still people in the arts that are falling through the cracks. Freelancers, there's artists, DJs, people like that that haven't had the same level of support. I think they need to have a system with the steps in place that show how we can come back to doing live events. We need the test and trace system to be up and running and efficient. Until that is, we know mass gatherings can't happen. When they start to open things up a little bit more, the main thing is for us to actually get out there and support these venues. If you're comfortable to go, go. Same as if you were comfortable to go to a restaurant, go to a restaurant. Be, be patient with the promoters when they are moving shows for the third, fourth time. If you can hold on to your ticket and you can afford to do so, then do that. Support artists if you can buy their merch and buy their records and keep them going because without the artists, we don't have an industry. If those artists aren't there, and the talented people that work in the industry, we're going to be a lot poorer for it. I'm sure that the extension of the furlough scheme has been helpful to a lot of people, but now we have to find new ways to help people fall in through the cracks.